When the Allies and the Red Army pushed forward throughout Nazi-occupied territory towards the end of the Second World War in Europe, the true crimes of the Third Reich would be uncovered. Dozens of concentration camps existed within the Third Reich, with the purpose of persecuting and executing those who one of history's most evil regimes deemed to be racially inferior. One of the most horrifying sights of the conflict was captured on camera as the British would show the true horrors of Hitler's regime with the liberation of Bergen-Belsen. Thousands of dead bodies would greet the liberators, showing the extent of the suffering inflicted by the SS. However, afterwards, justice in a sense was administered, with many of the perpetrators being sent to the gallows for their execution. Join us today as we look at the justified execution of Franz Hosler, the hitman of Auschwitz. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Franz Hosler was born in early 1906 and aspired to become a photographer. He would never achieve his ambition and worked in his early life as a worker inside a warehouse, but during the Great Depression he was let go and remained unemployed. With life seemingly losing purpose, he would join the Nazi party in November 1932 and would also join the SS. Hosler would also marry and have three children, but within the SS he would find his purpose. Within the regime, he would rise to the rank of Abo Sturmführer and would also join the Waffen SS as a reserve officer. He was posted inside the SS to work inside Dachau concentration camp in July 1933 and would work as a guard there and also a cook. It was here he would remain until the Second World War began. In June 1940, Franz Hosler was transferred to a new concentration camp which had only just opened. Auschwitz at the time had only recently started to receive its first mass transports of prisoners and here Franz would work managing the kitchens inside the camp and also work as a supervisor of the subcamps. He was deployed inside Auschwitz I initially and it was inside this system where he would commit horrendous crimes. Hosler would state initially when he came to Auschwitz it was a very small camp with only three blocks surrounded by barbed wire and around 400 prisoners. Hosler would maintain that he left the camp However, he was present in a number of horrific killings that took place within Auschwitz. For example, on the 28th of July 1941, he would accompany a shipment of 575 prisoners from Auschwitz I to go to Sonnenstein Castle. This was a euthanasia centre set up, which claimed the lives of around 15,000 prisoners during 1940 and 1941. Those prisoners who were sent here were those considered by the Nazis to be unworthy of life. These prisoners were all murdered and Hostler would be part of this. In June 1942, he would also help with the killing of 168 survivors of an uprising which failed at the camp. In 1942, Auschwitz-Birkenau would expand to become an extermination camp and within this part of the complex, Hostler would take on different roles and commands. Birkenau would become the main killing centre of the Holocaust using the gas chambers and within this, Germans would try to exterminate as many people as they could in efficient time. Franz Hosler would visit another extermination camp on the 16th of September, and from his visit would order a group of prisoners within a brigade called the Sonderkommando Hosler to dig up 107,000 corpses from the mass graves surrounding Auschwitz I. He then ordered the remains to be burned within the crematoria of Auschwitz II, which had just been built. Following the cremations, every member of Hostler's work detachment were murdered themselves. An SS camp doctor would also confirm Hostler's murder as crimes, as on the 10th of October 1942, he would liquidate a whole bunker. The SS doctor said, In connections with the gassings, I declare that on that day, around 1600 Dutch were gassed. This action was led by SS officer Hostler. I remember that he tried to drive the whole group into a single bunker. This was achieved to the last man, who could not be crammed into the bunker. Hostler shot this man with a revolver, and the bunk was then gassed. In August 1943, he was promoted to a senior position within the women's camp of Auschwitz-Birkenau. He would perform many of the selections which took place, in which prisoners were then sent to their deaths within the gas chambers. Hostler would describe the conditions here as not very pleasant. There were many sick people, Typhus and other diseases were rampant. He claimed to have tried to improve the conditions, however at his trial he would confirm that he did attend the selections for the gas chambers. 
he would state when the transports arrived. It was my duty to guard them, unloading the train. The prisoners would then be separated into two groups. Then the doctors arrived and they selected the people. The people who had been selected and found fit to work were put on one side. The people who were found unfit to work had to go in trucks and were driven off in the direction of the crematorium. Hostler would trick prisoners when they were heading to the gas chambers. Inside the undressing room, he would say, this is not a holiday resort, but a labour camp. The chance is there for every one of you. We shall look after your health, and we shall offer you well-paid work. Hang your clothes on the hooks provided, and please remember your number. When you've had your bath, there will be a bowl of soup and coffee or tea for all. Of course, instead of this, the prisoners were just sent to the gas chambers and murdered within minutes. Hostler would continue to make selections and force prisoners to their deaths. He would also execute prisoners who would revolt and refuse to work. In particular, he would execute four women who rose up against the guards. With regards to the selections, he would show no mercy, telling people they had lived too long before they were sent to the gas chambers. He would, however, maintain at his trial that he did not agree with the policy of Jewish liquidation, which was a complete falsity. Franz Hossler would become a commander at Neckerel's concentration camp, part of the Nachweiler Strutov complex. However, in January 1945, the Red Army would storm west through Nazi-occupied territories and Hostler was made a camp leader of the Mittelbau Dora concentration camp. He would continue at this time to send prisoners to their deaths, forcing them on death marches to head towards Bergen-Belsen, which was receiving a huge amount of prisoners away from the enemy lines. Hostler himself would continue towards Belsen and arrived on the 8th of April 1945. He became a deputy camp commander under Josef Kramer, the Beast of Belsen. During his time here, he would shoot prisoners until the camp was liberated. When the British arrived at Belsen, the scenes were horrifying. It was a true hell on earth, with bodies lying everywhere and diseases spreading around the desperate prisoners. Hostler would try to hide himself within the prisoners in their uniforms, however was detained by the British Army and was forced to work. The British would use the SS detainees and former guards to bury the thousands of corpses which were lying around the camp. During the Belsen trials, Hostler was placed on trial for his crimes at Auschwitz. He would claim that prisoners were not given enough food to live on and that he saw millions killed inside the concentration camp system. He would also claim that many would not go willingly to their deaths and that he did take part in the selection processes, sending thousands to the gas chambers. He did try to maintain his innocence, however the judges saw right through him. Along with a number of others including the Beast of Belsen and Irma Grays, Hostler was sentenced to death. The execution of Franz Hostler was carried out by Albert Pierpoint on the 13th of December 1945. That day, Pierpoint would hang all of those sentenced to death during the Belsen trials. Beforehand, he and his assistant would meet the condemned and calculate their weights and heights and the drop in which was sufficient enough to kill them, snapping the necks of the condemned. The execution chamber at Hamlin Prison was at the end of the rows of the cells in which the guilty were held and Hostler would have heard the preparations taking place for the executions from his cell. As each member of the former guard detachments of the camp were led out for their executions, Hostler would have contemplated his last moments. The women condemned were executed first by Pierpoint, and then the camp doctor Fritz Klein and Commandant Josef Kramer were executed. Interestingly, Hostler was sentenced to death for his crimes in Auschwitz and not Belsen, but he was executed alongside another defendant. Pierpoint was executing two people simultaneously on the gallows to speed up the process. After Hostler was dragged out of his cell and brought into the execution chamber, a white cloth was placed over his head and the noose was fastened around his neck. Pierpoint had made a white chalk mark on the trapdoor with an X on it and Hostler would have been moved into position before the trapdoor opened and Hostler was killed. After a short time hanging, his body was cut down after death was confirmed with his remains being cremated. The story of Franz Hosler is one which shows us the immense cruelty people could have in one of the darkest places on earth. Within Auschwitz, this SS guard played God with people's lives, deciding on a daily basis who would be sent to death and who would live another day. 
who would deem many unfit to work, to which they would be sent straight to their murders. Hostler was a despicable man, whose execution seems to be a justified one. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.